Love, love, love. <laughs> All you need is. And <laughs> what the world needs. Um, of course, we have to acknowledge that the word love um, is a bit loaded and perhaps gets bandied about a lot um, in ways that uh, um, make it seem more superficial. But we each have an, we each have our own relationship with this word. And you in your heart know what it is, right? You may not even name it the same way, but you know what we're talking about. And as I grow older, I realize that it is it has become, in a sense, my primary interest. How to love how to show love, how to receive love. It's become really my, my, my path. And I fail at it a lot. Um, I work with a lot of judgment. I sometimes find it hard to forgive. But in those, in, in the recognition, in the recognitions that are most clear to me, I know that when I'm having a hard time forgiving or when I'm in judgment, that I'm not seeing deeply enough the wound of the other person and that I haven't really, I haven't quite let that into my heart. And so this is in a sense, uh, it is, it is a, a growing uh, focus in my own life is just how to be love, how to show love, how to receive love. And I know, and I think you said once very famously, that at the end of one's days, at the end of one's life, in the last breath, the question one might have is, is not, you know, did I go to the office enough? Did I produce enough? Did I go around the world enough? But did I love well enough? Or did I really let that be the expression of this life? And that's just very, very, that's getting very, very clear. Now, it doesn't mean, of course, that one makes oneself available for abuse or anything like that. Obviously, boundaries are appropriate in our lives. But just that we can have a, a quiet recognition. You know, last night we were at Ram Dass's house for dinner, and we did a, um, our friend Wes, who was on the webcast last week, was with us, and we did a, a conversation that was videotaped, in which there was a moment in which Ramdas was speaking about his practice being that of loving awareness, being an expression of loving awareness. Now, just think of that for a minute, that your awareness, which we all have, obviously, is tuned to the love channel, that as you're watching and as you're seeing and as you're feeling, you're not just seeing the object in clarity, but you're actually generating a warmth for that, that object. So he, in fact, said as we were speaking, I love that wall. <laughs> he loved the wall. It doesn't have to be a, a so-called living creature to love it. And when you're, when, you, when you're sitting in the center of that, there is this uh, effulgence. There's a sense of abundance. There's a sense of magnanimity of generosity mm -hmm. because as we all know love just feels good so whatever your definition or however you want to think of this in terms of the word it's like that it's like the um, um, Supreme Court justice who said about pornography he <laughs> said you, you know, we don't, you, we don't, can't don't, define it, can't, but, but we know, you know it when, when you see, see it. it yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so um, like that, with love as well. And uh, we will also talk, as we said, that this is about true love, and it's also about eros, we will come to in a moment. But I'd like to give Jack the porch. <laughs> what I feel you, you're starting to do is make the, the field of love, and in a way, 
you're reminding us of something that we know and that we carry and that we lose and when it comes back alive in us when it opens there's a kind of sweetness it's mm. like honey your body starts to have a little glow and there's a golden quality to it and people think of love as passive in some way but it's the force that lifts cars off children you know mothers do these amazing things or you know that that carried Nelson Mandela dignity magnanimity as you said um, and an unshakable love of life that carried him through 27 years in prison to come out and be the the gracious world leader that he is um, so when it touches us um, it's as if we have this resonance in ourselves and it's so mysterious love I mean, love is mysterious like gravity I and mean, what is gravity you know that you know things are attracted to one another um, the, the sun is pulling all the planets close to itself in orbit so they don't spin out um, and every every little asteroid and planet is tugging at one another and I just see that as the physical analog to the connection of love that is what makes the world and what makes the universe in a certain way love is our oneness we came out of the Big Bang if you want the scientific part or out of the luminosity I think it's the big flash actually because no one could hear it it was the luminous light um, and there's some core memory in us just as our body came out of the seawater of this earth and of the minerals that we are connected and love is that deep knowledge um, and things get in the way and we need to be individual and have our boundaries and so forth but without that knowledge everything tastes wrong Yes. It, it, you know, it, it tastes dry. And even spiritual practice, you're part of Dharma Dialogues because you have a spiritual life. There's some part of you that's awakening in your heart and has perhaps for a long time. I'm sorry for that in some ways because it means, love also means that you feel the, that you let yourself feel the um, tainted glory of humanity, to use Oscar Wilde's term. You use, mm -hmm. you've, you know, to love is a tough thing as well. You have to love what's what's painful and what's beautiful, but it's the only thing that makes life really worthwhile. You quote in your book, uh, in, in The Wise Heart, you quote Mayor Baba saying, true love is not for the faint of heart. Yeah. Yeah. And also, it's under there, you know, you think, oh, that person's just interested in power, and that person's just interested in, you know, domination, or just afraid and protecting themselves. Underneath is the current of love in all of uh, in all of oh, those ways, um, George Wald, the Nobel Prize winning biologist at Harvard, um, wrote a beautiful essay and at one point he said um, that uh, really what one wants in this life is love. He said, take me, I worked all the time and got a Nobel Prize and it was in order to get love. He said the Nobel Prize was a consolation prize. <laughs> That's so great.